The following program was paid for by the friends and partners of WLMB TV 40 Toledo. At the end of the day, what I'm trying to do is I want to teach a coach how to do discipleship with their athletes. And what does that look like in the parameters of today's society? And the whole goal is if I can impact a coach, the coach can impact the team, the team can impact the school, and the school can impact the community. I want to welcome you to another episode of Main Street, the fastest half hour on television. I'm Dr. Jamie Schmitz, and I am very pleased to have my co-host of 21 years, Virginia Bosse, sitting next to me. How are you, Virginia? Well, I am doing excellent. Jamie, I'm excited about today's show. And, you know, if you're an athlete out there or you have family that's an athlete, today is the day to be watching Main Street. We have Josh Erd, who's the Area Director of Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And uh, so, Josh, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. It's just a pleasure to be here. And it's just awesome that I get an opportunity to be able to share kind of what we're doing with Fellowship of Christian Athletes and how it impacts people here in Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan. It's good to have you with us, Josh. Uh, would you tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe a little bit about your family? Yeah, so I, I've been married for almost 20 years to my wonderful wife, Jamie, and I have two kids. I have a 14-year-old son, Josiah, and a 12-year-old daughter, Janae. Um, who are sports kids all by themselves. So they play lots of different things and keep us hopping and, and moving. So, yeah. Well, awesome. Well, tell us about your role, you know, as area director. Yeah, so I'm the, the Northwest Ohio, Southeast Michigan area director. Um, I'm in charge of about 600 different schools um, here in uh, Northwest Ohio, Southeast Michigan for FCA. And it's just an awesome opportunity to be able to share the gospel message in our public schools. And today's climate and just the things that are going on, everybody says separation of church and state, and that mm -hmm. couldn't be further from the truth within FCA. So we are in currently almost 35 different schools that are here in Northwest Ohio and able to, to share the gospel message with those coaches and athletes that, that are a part of that school. Uh, what is the mission of, uh, of FCA? Yeah, it's to see every coach and athlete in a growing relationship with Jesus Christ and his church. So really trying to share the message of Jesus with coaches and athletes and really get them connected into a local church where they can grow spiritually. So we're kind of the springboard and the conduit to kind of get them going and being able to connect them back to a church. Well, we hear you talking about coaches and athletes. Well, so who should all get involved with the FCA? Yeah, really anybody that has an athletic experience or background at all. Um, even if you just watch sports, if you like sports at all, FCA is probably for you. Um, the biggest thing that I tell people is if you despise watching the Super Bowl, you probably won't get anything out of FCA. <laughs> just from the, the simple aspect of everything we talk about is in a sports lens. Um, you don't necessarily have to be on your varsity sports team to be a part of FCA, but we do ask that you're, you like sports and you're, you're okay with some of the, the pieces that we use because a lot of analogies and things that we talk about story-wise have to do with coaches and athletes. So yeah. we're, we're using that lens. Now, uh, let's uh, back up a little bit. Okay. Uh, now that you're in FCA, I'm going to kind of guess that maybe there were some sports when you were, you know, maybe in uh, elementary, middle school, high school. Uh, what's, what's that picture look like? Yeah, for sure. I, I was a football, basketball, baseball kid growing up. So you, my mom said if goat herding was on ESPN, I would watch it and I'd figure out how to play it and how to do it. So I, I did just about everything sports-wise. But baseball, basketball, football uh, were kind of my, my sports and baseball being my number one. I, I love the game and love to play. So it was something that was I was very passionate about. Now, so then what led you to get involved with yeah. FCA? Yeah, I got, I got involved in coaching, actually. So I, I was injured as a college athlete um, and stopped playing baseball in particular. And it was one of those things of I, I got into coaching right after that because I wanted to stay in the game and absolutely fell in love with it and fell in love with when the light bulb went off for an athlete that they got it. And it was like that was the aha moment for me and kind of like it kept fueling me to want to go and to want to coach more. Um, so it was just one of those spots that I love to coach. So I got into some different camps and helping with some different FCA activities and those types of pieces. And that's really how I got involved with FCA was from a camp perspective in coaching. And so then, you know, why are you passionate about working with an 
FCA and working with students and coaches. Yeah. I, you get to, to mix the, the piece of, of Jesus and, and what's going on in today's society as well as with sports. All kids want to be some type of an athlete of some kind. You kind of watch that go on in our today's society of, of kids that want to be involved in sports. And I get to mesh Jesus within that and show Christ's love through sport. It's just an awesome, awesome avenue and a vehicle to be able to share the, the message of Jesus. And that's really why I do what I do. Um, I'm, I'm very, very passionate um, about teaching kids how to live it out for real. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we put them in a setting where it's a classroom type setting or we, we teach them how, how to love God when they're at church. But what does that look like when they go back to school? What does that look like when they're on the athletic field? What does it look like when there's real adversity out there in the, in the world and you get you just got your butt kicked on, <laughs> on the athletic field and what happens now? How, how do we handle that? And we're able to teach coaches and athletes how to walk through that and what that really means. And we have coaches every day and, and athletes for that matter too, that, that we screw up and we say the wrong thing or something comes out wrong. Um, we act in an inappropriate way on the field and we're able to circle back around with them and kind of have the next layer of conversation of here's what grace really means and here's what this mm -hmm. looks like. And here's what it looks like to go apologize to an official because you said something you probably shouldn't have in the middle of all of that and being able to, to walk through real life situations where rubber meets the road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what kind of impact have you guys seen? Like what, what, you know, do you have like a story that you could share with us? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I could sit here and talk for a couple hours and we don't have that much time, but the, the realities are I, I, there's been many, many coaches. I, I have one coach in particular um, that I, I worked with for almost the last five years. And he was a guy that was kind of down and out on himself. He was a great coach. And he loved to do just some different things with athletes on the field. But he didn't understand how his faith component would really work and mesh into that those pieces. And everybody kind of said, no, we're done with you coaching. We don't want you to be a part of our program anymore. And I kind of befriended him and kind of took him under my wing and said, okay, I'm willing to, to take a chance on you, but I want here's some stipulations and what that needs to look like. And at first he was very, very apprehensive and kind of, I, I don't know if this is what this should look like. And I don't know if I can do this, if I'm the right person for this. And it was just one of those spots where I felt like God tugging at my heart and saying, this is a guy that you need to pour into. And he was a guy that he wasn't really engaged in his church. Um, he was a believer, but it was one of those things he got burnt in the church and didn't understand you know, what a relationship really, really looked like. And it was every week I would text him on Sunday morning and say, hey, I'm going to church if you want to go, 10, 10 a.m., here we go. And every week he ignored me. And this was like a year process of just texting every day to the point where my wife went, are you really going to text him again? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to text him again. Someday he might come. And he did. He came to church and he missed like the next three weeks and I kept texting him. And then his wife came to church and then his family started coming to church. And then he's like, well, they're all coming. I have to go. And it, it was about three years into that process where he got baptized and he's just on fire right now. And to watch him now coach the sports that he loves and to be able to pour into athletes with the love of, a love of Christ and be able to share devotions and just to be able to do some different things with, with athletes that five years ago I would have said it isn't possible. Like this guy's not ready to do this and to see where he's at today. I mean, it, it's a total God thing and to watch God work through his life and to watch him impact the amount of kids that he's able to impact is just an awesome, awesome experience in my seat to be able to see that. And really it just started with, I'm going to text you every Sunday morning. Wow. Now, uh, you mentioned earlier that you oversee about 600 schools in Northwest Ohio, Southeastern Michigan. Um, you know, how do you coordinate getting to 600 schools? I mean, how do you make inroads? And, and do you primarily work through coaches and see yourself as a conduit that way and, you know, to get to the students? Or how does that all work? Yeah, so I, I rely on a huge volunteer base um, to kind of do what we do. Um, within the FCA structure, we have what we call huddles, which are Bible studies that happen on, on public schools. Um, so a, a lot of times w what that would look like is we would have either a teacher or a coach that would kind of be the facilitator for that. Um, all of our sessions are student led. So our kids are the ones actually leading. That's how we get around the separation of church and state. Um, the school administration's not allowed to lead these events. It doesn't mean they can't be present. It doesn't mean they can't participate, but they're not allowed to lead. Um, so our students do lead all of these, these pieces, but they normally have an adult supervisor that's helping them and guiding them and directing them. And every school district's a little different as far as where that fits within the structure of their confines and how they do things. Um, but the, the realities are, I, I rely on a ton of volunteers to make that happen. 
Um, at the end of the day, what I'm trying to do is I want to teach a coach how to do discipleship with their athletes. And what does that look like in the parameters of today's society? And the whole goal is if I can impact a coach, the coach can impact a team, the team can impact the school, and the school can impact the community. So at the end of the day, that's really where we're trying to get to. Um, I want to focus on doing discipleship with coach. And how do I get in, in the end road with coach, teach him how to do discipleship with his athletes? Yeah. How would you say that the Bible informs I mean there's some analogies you know to sure. you know win the prize and sure. you know champions for Christ and stuff like that but how does the Bible inform you know the athlete you know the young man or young woman you know who is in high school and you know compete in a competitive sport yeah I, I think we really use the Bible in in the contextual pieces and I'm a history guy so I love the Bible and kind of what it represents and I want to be back into the, the history pieces of the Bible and being able to, to share within that. Um, so I'm, I'm always contextually trying to put things into play. In sports you see all kinds of pieces of verses that are used way out of context and kind of where they're at. So I, for me, I'm actually using stories of perseverance a lot of times. And you look at how many people in the Bible that overcame crazy things that they thought they couldn't do. And I use that a lot with our athletes and a lot with our coaches. I mean, you look at Moses and you look at Joshua and just those two stories right there and go, Moses, when I can't speak, I'm not the guy that stand up here and talk. And I go, okay, when I get a kid that says, well, I, I can't pray in front of my peers, what does that look like? Well, here's how you can. Um, one of the things we do with our baseball teams, we actually invite other teams to pray with us at home plate after our games. And it's just an awesome experience to watch, you know, 13, 14 year old boys actually pray with their peers, whether they win or they lose, with, with their teammates. And I get kids all the time that go, I can't do this. And it's like, well, why can't you? And I'm able to reference back to the Bible and say, okay, look at these people and look what they said they couldn't do and how did God use them? Now, if a, uh, you know, a high school athlete uh, was in FCA, what would that look like? Would they meet once a week? Do they meet every day, you know, Monday through Friday? Uh, do they have specially, special quarter of, quarterly events that they go to? Mm -hmm. uh, and I know uh, because WMB has uh, broadcast some FCC, uh, FCA events uh, in the past that occasionally you have some really well-known coaches or, um, you know, athletes that come through and speak at, you know, big um, uh, fundraising dinners and stuff like that. But what does it look like for for a student on a week-to-week -week basis, you know, what, what's a year look like in the life of FCA uh, for a student, yes. for an athlete? So it, it varies from school to school, kind of what's going on in their campus. Um, I'll use Springfield High School as an example. Um, they have multiple huddles that happen on their campus. So the basketball teams, both boys and girls, have huddles that happen weekly. Um, so they're getting somebody to come in and speak and to share with their team. So a team. huddle has like a coach or uh, a leader? A leader. Uh, an adult leader. An, an adult leader. kind of oversees. Yep. Okay. So they meet where they geographically Right meet. at their practice. Okay. So it happens right at their practice, and normally it's a character type study that happens right at their practice. Um, we actually have a staff person that goes in and actually meets with those teams and works with those teams um, for basketball, both boys and girls. Now, now I'm curious: is the like what the, the lesson that they're learning in the huddle is that uh, is that like FCA curriculum that's been developed, or does the person have their own ability to you know to come up with whatever they want? Uh, I'd, I'd kind of like a little context. Yeah, on yeah, that. no, it. It varies. I will say FCA does have some great curriculum. Um, we have some online resources that have thousands of devotionals that can that happen on there. Um, a lot of times it's a personal story and people are coming in and kind of sharing where they're at today and kind of what God's doing in their life. I know my staff member right now actually has um, some college friends that they actually Skype in, in at their practice and they get to share their testimony. So they're getting just different perspectives on, on college kids and where they're at today because a lot of these kids are looking to play college athletics and they want to know what that looks like and what they had to do and how God kind of shaped and formed them through their formidable years in high school right now. Well, it's exciting to hear all that is going on with the SDA, with the huddles and the coaches, the impact that you guys are making. And we're going to hear more about that impact when we come back. The biggest difference with us is we're able to share the gospel message. And yeah. we do pray and we do do devotions and we're a part of the integration of rubber meets the road of how do you live this out every day. WLMB's free monthly program guide keeps you informed about your favorite Christ-centered and family-friendly programming found on WLMB. 
there's something for the whole family to enjoy, from great Bible teachers to classic family favorites. Plus, you'll find family movies, news from a Christian perspective, local shows Main Street and Pastor's Point, excellent don't-miss documentaries, and much more. Enjoy quality Christian television on WLMB TV 40 and sign up for your free monthly program guide today. The mission of Dominion Broadcasting WLMB TV 40 is to provide Christ-centered television of high technical quality and programming excellence to uplift, unite, educate, challenge, and encourage viewers in a manner consistent with the teachings of God's Word. Won't you join us? Please send your gift today and be a part of the ongoing mission of WLMB TV 40. Thank you. Now, back to Main Street. We're here with Josh Erd, and he's the area director of Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And Josh, it is great to have you. We have been talking about the you know impact that FCA is making on our community. You know, and I'd love for you to share a story of how FCA is impacting the students. Yeah. So, on our club teams, um, we have a <clears throat> baseball team that, in particular, I had a student with me. He he started at the age of eight years old. And parents come in, and he starts talking to me. He wants to play baseball, and he's excited. And mom and dad say, okay, we, we want to be a part of your team. He's got some friends that play on this team. But this whole Christian piece, we, we don't really know. Like, mm. we don't know what that looks like, and can, can you explain a little bit more? Um, so it just gave me a, an opportunity to share a little bit of an overview just with the parents, just kind of what we do and how we do things and, you know, how that's going to impact their lives in, in general. Um, but it was very, very surfacey and very high level. Um, I said, we, we are going to pray. We are going to do devotions at practice. Um, just to name some examples of things that we're going to do. I said, but I'm not going to stand up here and beat you over the head with a Bible as well. Right. I said, that's, that's not my position and that's not my job, but we are going to share the message of Jesus with your son. And they said, okay, well, we, we want to be a part of this organization because we know you're going to teach high level baseball. We, we want him to play with his friends and to be a part of this. And I said, okay. So it, it went on for a, about a year and a half with this student um, that he was a part of our team. And Within that, he was one of the kids that he would never pray at home plate, and he, did, he didn't feel comfortable with that, and it wasn't anything that I was pushing as a coach, but he watched his friends do it, and he watched things kind of go on. He watched us as coaches and how we carried ourselves and, and what that looked like. Um, in particular, I remember Dad coming up to me after a very heated championship game, and the other coaches were screaming across the field, and it just got ugly really, really fast. And he goes, I just want to say thank you to you guys for how you carried yourself and what that looked like on the field. Mm -hmm. And he goes, you're being a good example for these kids and, and what that is. And really no contextual context of spirituality. Like that wasn't their family and that wasn't what that looked like. It, it, another year went by and all of a sudden th this student comes up to me and he, he goes, hey coach, you know, I, I think I'm ready to pray. Can, can I pray at home plate? And, and I went, okay, I'm good. So a after one of the games, I, I looked at him, I said, are you ready? And he went, no, no, not right now. And he, he chickened out. And I'm like, okay, that's okay, bud. So we picked somebody else and, and they prayed and, and it was okay. But it allowed me to then circle back and have another conversation with them of, okay, why, why were you afraid and what did that look like? And what were you feeling through that time? And that, that student, you just watched his eyes like, I, I don't think I'm equipped to do this. And I don't think that this is me and I, everybody who's going to look down at me if I say something wrong and, and all those types of pieces and all the doubt that went through his head. And I was just able to encourage him and just say, no, like, like God just wants you to speak from your heart. And that, that's, right. that's the biggest piece of it. When it all comes down to the end of the day, he wants you to speak from your heart. And so at practice the next time when we closed and I said, okay, are you ready to pray now? And he's like, yeah, I'll do it. So at practice, he does it. And it, it, was, a, it was a very, very heartfelt prayer. And he, he opened his eyes and he's like, I did it. I, I was able to do that. Um, a, another year went by, he kind of got in our rotation of kids that wanted to pray. And it got to the point on our team where I literally had to make a list of who prayed last because the kids would all fight over it. Who, who's going to pray? Awesome. And I mean, at this time, we were like 9, 10, 11, 12 year old boys, and they're like fighting over who's going to pray at home plate. And it's like, okay, that's a cool problem to have <laughs> yeah. as a director, as a that's coach. That's something you don't hear every day. No, they, they, were, they were super excited about, about that. And you just kind of watched. I, I always give them a homework assignment, and it's normally some type of Bible reading. Um, our kids don't want to read in particular, and they really don't want to read the Bible. And as a coach in my world and my role, I really want to get them in the Bible and being encouraging them that they need to be in the Bible every day. Right. So I try to give them verses that we're going to talk about next week. So that they always get a homework assignment. And for a while, I would say I would get half my team would do it and half my team wouldn't. 
Well, I started giving them punishment with push-ups, and we did running, just did other stuff for not reading the Bible. And I looked at one of my assistant coaches, and I'm like, so in what other place do you get disciplined for not doing your Bible homework? And it, it was just a, a cool environment that we started to create. But this kid in particular always was one doing his homework. He was always in his Bible and always reading, always asking more questions. And he went to a public school where I have some kids that are in the Christian school environment and some kids that are not. And as I'm asking questions, the Christian school kids are always raising their hand because they know the do's and the don'ts mm -hmm. and what, what they're supposed to do or what they're supposed to t say. or They know the Bible story. This kid wasn't in that environment every day. But you could tell he was retention, retaining knowledge and being able to, to spit it back out at me. And you could tell that God was working on his heart. And that's it, what it's all about. That's really what it's all about. And it, again, it, another year went by. So he was 13 years old. And I remember the day specifically that mom comes up to me. And when we're away at tournaments and we do some different things, if we have a chance, we'll go to church as a, as a team. And we call it, that's our family church time as a team. Because we do so much together that we really are a close-knit family. We got to go to church together as a team. Um, we were in Indianapolis, and this mom comes up to me, and she goes, I've never heard anybody speak the way that that guy spoke. And mm -hmm. she goes, I've never felt what I felt in a church ever before in, in that piece, and I want to know more. Mm -hmm. And she started to get connected to a local church. I got her connected to a local pastor. Um, as a family, they started to go to church. Um, that athlete started to engage more, and he really pushed mom and dad, like, we, we need to go to church. Like, this is what this is about. And just to kind of watch that whole progression. And again, he started with us at eight. He's now 14 years old. And to kind of watch that progression go on, it wasn't anything that it was instantaneous, but it was a cool progression journey to watch this st start with a student who he wanted to play baseball with his buddies and mom and dad not really sure what that looked like to the point of he's reading his Bible, praying in front of his peers to now parents are going to church. Um, the this, this student has been baptized. He has saved and it, it's just an awesome awesome story of of what god has done and how he's he's used this vehicle to be able to to impact people and that is awesome i mean you're making an eternal impact yeah. on these kids and um and so you know you you talked about the club sports mm -hmm. and um and I, you mentioned going to Indianapolis, and so I'm, yeah. you know, I'm guessing that that was part of the whole club sports. And, yeah. and you know, it's like my daughter did club sports, and I can remember, you know, going on trips with her. But to tell, to hear you saying that as a team, you guys are going to church. Yeah. That is wonderful. Um, you know, so who all is the club sports for? You know, what what does that look like? Yeah. So club sports is something that was kind of new to FCA. About 10 years ago, I was challenged with, you know, if we do get pushed out of schools and we're not able to continue to do our huddle ministry and Bible study ministry in schools, what is the next platform that FCA is going to be able to use and what does that look like? Um, so they threw a stat out. The stat is very, very old. Um, I would say it's about 10 years old, but they said at the time there were 56 million kids playing sports in the United States and 50 million of them were playing outside of high school. Mm -hmm. So when you really look at that number, there's so many kids that are not playing in their schools. And as you've seen the progression go in the club scene across those 10 years, I mean, it's changed tremendously. So many kids are not playing for their high school now. They want to play for their club team, and that's where the college recruits are. Mm -hmm. That's where all of this is happening and taking place is on the club scene. So it, it really was my challenge to say, what does that platform look like for FCA, and how do we do this? Um, so we started with two baseball teams 10 years ago to the point now we're at 53 teams in seven different sports. Um, soccer's being our biggest sport, hand down we have 35 teams in soccer um, here in northwest ohio and wow. southeast michigan really? playing at all levels so from u8 all the way to u19 we have soccer teams that play under the fca banner um, which is just an awesome awesome testimony to what kind of what god has been able to do through through this ministry um, but we are just like any other club team from the standpoint of we're teaching athletics and teaching the sport and playing at a high level. We've got teams that play in the Michigan State Premier League um, all the way down to our local rec team. So we, we offer a wide variety of skill level spots. But the biggest difference with us is we're able to share the gospel message. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we do pray and we do do devotions. And we're a part of the integration of rubber meets the road of how do you live this out every day. And within that, it creates lots of challenges within our club teams. Um, and it, there's lots of things that people go, well, you call yourself a Christian. We, yeah, we do. And we're going to do this to the best of our ability. And if that means we're going to beat you two to one, that's how this is going to work. And we're going to help you up. And we're, 
dust you off and we're going to play again and we're going to go hard. But it, it's just one of those expectations of people look at us differently because we're fellowship of Christian athletes in the outside world, but they know there's something different about us because of how we compete. Yeah, so uh, it seems as though club sports have really kind of come of age, you know, here in the last decade. And you got a ton of club sports, uh, you know, that, you know, your area is offering. Uh, how does uh, team selection work, though, for FCC's club sports in this area? Yeah, so team selection varies by age group and it varies by sport. Um, and soccer's done a really, really good job of creating multiple divisions for, for athletes. So no matter where your skill set is in the soccer world, they probably have a division and we probably have a team that fits within that division for it. Um, you might have to drive a little bit. So our soccer divisions, we have soccer that happens in Oregon, Ohio. Um, we have soccer in Wauseon, Ohio, and then we have soccer in Adrian, Michigan. Um, kind of our hubs is where we have teams that are located. So. Adrian's our biggest piece. If we have somebody that lives in Oregon and we don't have a team for them, I guarantee we have a team in Adrian for them to play on. So they might have to drive a little bit to get there, but that kind of gives them an opportunity to be able to play at one of those skill levels of where they fit. Um, baseball in particular, they don't do a very good job of separating kids. So we do have a tryout selection process and we do cut kids. It's the worst day in my world in the whole entire time. I don't want to tell a kid that they can't play and they can't be a part of, of what we're doing. But just the competition piece of where this is at, we have to sometimes, it's unfor sport. unfortunately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so within that, we're trying to always get better. Um, I hate telling kids no. But in the same context, that's kind of where it's gone to, um, and it's always kind of been there. And we've, we're always looking to ways to, to try to mitigate that as much as we possibly can and create teams for age groups that, that make sense or skill levels that make sense. How, how can people get their kids involved with the clubs, the huddles, find out more about FCA? Yeah, if you want to go to our website, um, northwestohiofca.org um, or fcaclubsports.org. Um, are two of our websites and really they both have links to either one. They can find out all the information that's there, um, has information on how to contact their office. They can always contact me as well. I'd love to share and talk more about FCA at any time. So. Hey, and then you guys have some major events that are in the spring and fall. Maybe you could, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about those. Sure, yeah, we have a, a spring event. Um, it's called our Hall of Champions event. Um, it happens every year, and it's just one of those pieces that really highlights our high school ministry, and we're able to bring up a high school coach that's been impacted through the ministry of FCA. Um, we always do a high school athlete as well, um, and then we always do a huddle leader, somebody who's actually leading one of the huddles at the school. And you get to hear testimonies from them right here locally of, of what they're doing and how God's impacted them in their, on their campus and how they're able to impact their campus through the vehicle of FCA. Um, and then in the fall, you have UTBG event? Yeah, we do. It's called the Unity Breakfast. Um, it happens around the game. It's always the day before the game. Um, we do a big breakfast, and we both have both coaches from both schools as well as five athletes from each school, and they get to share their testimonies too and kind of what's going on on their campus and how their, their football teams have been impacted. BG last year was able to uh, have a couple baptisms that happened after practice, awesome. which was an awesome, awesome experience just to kind of see some of that and kind of how God's using their team and to further his kingdom. So. And you guys have brought in some big names for that as well. We have. We brought in some big names. We brought in Jim Trussell. We brought in Bobby Bowden. Um, so there's always a big name speaker for kind of what we're doing and kind of able to highlight that on a national scale as well of, of kind of what, what sports and, and God do together as, as we move forward in that so conduit. So people need to check out the website check to, out our website. to see Nor what's going on. Yeah, northwestohiofca.org or fcaclubsports.org. Fantastic. Josh, thank you for being with us here on Main Street. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right. Well, if you want to learn more about FCA, check out that website. Thank you for joining us this week on Main Street. Be sure to join us next week for another great episode. We hope that Main Street has been a blessing to you today. Please feel free to contact the following to learn more about the topics discussed on today's show. WLMB would like to thank all the faithful supporters of WLMB that make this program possible. Main Street is a production of WLMB-TV40 in Toledo, all rights reserved.